Welcome back. I feel like one of the most common questions I get is how to save your yeast. You know, the only reason I haven't done a video about this is because it's so incredibly simple. Um, you can basically have almost no equipment to do it or you can like get super into it and like get microscopes and stuff. But um, I'm gonna show you guys how to do that today. So you will know and then you don't have to ask me. As I'm sure most people are aware, I have a severe lack of refrigerator and freezer space. Hence my acquiring of a bunch of beverage refrigerators. Uh, my favorite brand is New Air and they just came out with their anniversary edition 100 can beverage refrigerator. Uh, so I thought this would be perfect for storing my yeast. Uh, I am going to get super into it. I already have my microscope on order. This uh, refrigerator, you know, it's got pretty much like a combination of all the good stuff that New Air has been doing. It's got the double pane glass. It's really stable in temperature. So this will cool down to 37 degrees, which is ideal for storing yeast. Uh, you don't want to freeze your yeast because they can die. Like you know, they're living, so. <laughs> I also can uh, fit some of my sparkling waters in there for when I'm brewing because it gets so warm in here. You can probably already see me sweating. So this refrigerator basically is going to hold all my yeast supplies and my other refrigerator that can actually get colder that's by New Air can hold all of my hops. Um, and then my actual in-house refrigerator can hold food, which is a novel idea, I know. So yeast, you know, it's an organism, it's alive. I think that's probably why a lot of people are intimidated by the thought of saving it. The only thing you've really gotta be concerned about is your sanitizing and you can pretty much save yeast forever. Um, as long as you keep regrowing it basically using starters. A starter is basically how you increase the number of cells in your yeast supply. So something like this, this is actually a decanted starter. Um, by decant, I mean it started out at 1600 and I let the yeasts work on it. This was a three-year-old um, culture of a wheat yeast. Don't even know what kind, honestly. I just know I use it in my wheat beer. I let the yeast grow and then I stuck it in the refrigerator for a couple days. And once you do that, it basically gives you a layer of yeast at the bottom that's the white part. And then uh, you get your liquid above. It's basically beer uh, to some degree, flavorless beer, you don't wanna drink it. And you just decant off the top, save the beautiful yeast at the bottom, and then you can fit it in a smaller container. Um, this is a starter that's basically ready to go. So I'm gonna throw it in a mason jar and just throw it in the refrigerator for when I'm gonna make my wheat beer, which is gonna be like a couple weeks from now. Now there's another way to store it. These are called slats. They're 15 milliliters a piece. And basically what I'm gonna start doing just to save as much room as possible because the mason jars do get pretty bulky. Um, you know, if you are seriously running out of space in your refrigerator and your spouse won't let you get another mini fridge, uh, this is my suggestion. Um, so I'm going to actually take all of my old yeasts that aren't ready to go into a beer uh, and put them in here and they have like little label mark points and these are all sterilized, but I'm going to sanitize them as well. And uh, yeah, so when you are saving yeast, Typically, unless you've got like a lot of it and you know it's viable and it's pretty fresh, like within a month, um, you are gonna wanna make a starter with it. Uh, and it's just one liter per 100 grams of DME. You're basically making a very uh, low alcohol wort and you're gonna wanna put some yeast nutrient in it um, and use a stir plate or dissolved oxygen or an air pump of some kind to provide oxygen because the cell walls do need oxygen to be made. Um, honestly, I used to do this aquarium pump thing and you can see the video right there. It's a lot more complicated than just getting yourself a little stir plate. I got this one on Amazon for like 20 bucks, 20, 30. It wasn't expensive. Um, the ones that you 
find on like the homebrew shop stuff they're like a hundred bucks for some reason they're all the same and you throw one of these little magnetic stirrers in there um make sure this is sanitized and then it'll just spin it around i can show you how it works actually it works when there's more liquid that's basically what it does it just spins it around to incorporate the oxygen very cool sciencey stuff so i'm going to show you guys how to transfer i'm going to transfer my le fin du monde yeast and I am also going to transfer my two other Belgian yeasts that I used today. I'll show you like a few different methods. When you're using a conical or a floating dip tube, it's really easy. I, if you're just going to try to dump it, it's a little messier, also very easy. But yeah, not everyone's got conicals or pressure fermenting. So, you know, I seriously just used to dump it. A lot of times uh, if you have even the like lower end fermenters that have valves on them, it's really easy to get a sample. Once your beer level gets down to the valve, it's usually pretty clear down to that point. And then just stop transferring it into your beer, swirl it around, transfer it right into a mason jar that is sanitized and you're set, that's it, and label it. All right, so the first one I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just throw this in a mason jar. Mason jar. Um. One really fun thing you can do with the mason jars is actually prep a bunch of starter and just save them in here. If you put it in when it's still uh, basically boiling, it will seal it and sanitize it itself. So you can just throw this right in your fridge and as long as you don't get that, this, this noise, it means that nothing's grown in it. So you can feel free to use it for your next batch. And it's just a really easy way to like, make a quick starter, um, yeah, very easy. And then you can just throw it in one of those with a funnel. All right, so this is all sanitized. The yeast likes to stick to the bottom and to the sides, so you're definitely gonna wanna give it a good swirl. This, this is literally how easy it is. This is it. And I'm done. It's amazing. It's so easy. Another great thing about mason jars is they usually have the date written on there. So you can always put your date um, and you will basically know like what generation it is or whatnot. I started writing my generations on it actually as well. You're not supposed to use your yeast after like generation 10 without like double checking your viability. So I mean, if you're paying $7 for a pack of yeast and you use that 10 times, that's 70 cents for your yeast. That's saving so much money. It's crazy. It's like six, saving $63. So think about that when you're not saving your yeast. You're just dumping money down the drain. I'm very cheap. Okay, so yeah, this just goes in here. And it's gonna go to the back because I'm about to transfer all these. Now I'm going to transfer my all my Belgian yeast. I have three different ones to transfer and I'm going to be getting like a significant amount of yeast. So I'm probably just gonna throw them into some pint mason jars and let them sit like that one's doing until it completely decants and then I can actually pull the really good yeast. Some fermenters have these yeast collection or troop collection bins at the bottom. I've already taken one of these out that was basically troop. So this should pretty much all be yeast and there's a butterfly valve that connects it to the top and you can just take it apart. And dump it in a mason jar. So I'll just sanitize my mason jar. I'm gonna dump out some of this liquid. Just pour the rest in there. So we'll let this settle and then we can decant it and put it in one of our slats. As most of you know, that will basically turn into this and then we can get rid of this liquid and just save that. All right, so another way that we can transfer yeast if you've got like a fermenter with a floating dip tube is like literally just transfer into it, just swirl the yeast around a bit in there, sanitize your mason jar. And 
And this should technically have enough pressure left to be able to do this. There we go. All right, so this will also decant and leave us with a nice layer of yeast. So here I have another pressurized fermenter, but I wanna show you guys like something that you can use for any kind of fermenter. This in my hands that I'm sanitizing is called a wine thief. A lot of you guys probably have one of these for um, taking samples. It's just kind of easy to have because you basically stick it in, cover with your thumb, and you can take samples of like whatever you want. It's good for hydrometer readings. All right, so to take a sample with this, all you do is get it in there, firstly. Cover the hole with your thumb and attempt to get it out of this very small hole. Like, yeah, this is not the best method. My preference would just be to pour it, but I figured I would give you guys more than one option. So honestly, you can just save that much and be totally cool. All right, I'm going to show you one last method. So in addition to collecting from your fermenters, um, for the most part, you can actually collect yeast from your kegs as well when they're on their last leg. Um, well, this only applies if you have floating dip tubes um, in your keg, because if you don't, you will probably just um, drain the whole thing unless you cut your dip tubes. A lot of people cut their dip tubes to not pull from the very bottom, to just pull from like an inch above. In that case, you'll probably have some settled yeast in there. But this is just, I'm going to pour it in here. That's it. And you guys are probably going to cringe. I will sanitize the top of this. Not saying that I usually do. All right, so I don't know if you can see, but there is definite yeast at the bottom. I'm just gonna swirl it up, try to get it as mixed together as possible. Like the odds of this being trube in the bottom is pretty slim because, um, you know, it's already fermented and it just had some suspended yeast. All right, so we're all mixed up. You guys are gonna hate me for this. All right, so there is a bunch of yeast. And you know, the key is to just like decant, make it smaller if you wanna do slants and save some space. If not, just leave it in the mason jar, no one cares. One thing you might come across is that you can't really tell where the yeast is. So this one, it's a dark beer, so it's kinda of hard to tell. What you can do for this is actually add some water, shake it up, and throw it in the refrigerator to decant and then you should have a nice white layer of yeast on the top. This one's been through hell and back, as you can tell, for my Irish ale yeast. Oh, I did have Irish ale yeast. I just reordered this. But anyway, you can see this is my Voskovike. You get a nice layer at the bottom, so we're just gonna try to suck up all that and throw it in a slat. All right, so let's sanitize some slats. All right, so I'm gonna use this like sterilized needle. Um, I just have these to measure chemicals, honestly. Um, it makes it really easy and you can get into tight spots since it is a needle. Um, these are sterilized already, um, so I'm not gonna worry about it. I am gonna dip the tip in though. I'm not sure how really reusable these slats are, um, but they're, I think I got like 50 for like something like $15 or something. We are going to do our Voss, Leilamon Voskovike Gen 1 in this one. Okay, so we're gonna attempt to suck up the delicious, delicious yeast and very little, the not so delicious beer. The beer is also delicious, just not for this experiment. All right, 10 milligrams actually, actually I think this is a little more than 10 milligrams. I got about 11 milligrams. I'm gonna throw a lid on, throw it in my slat. 
I'm actually going to make a couple of each of these. Why not? The yeast is there. That way we have multiple sets of the same generation. So technically we could get 10 generations out of each of these. All right, so I got three vials. Between, if you're gonna do this like I'm doing this, you're gonna need to sanitize your needle in between so that you don't cross contaminate your yeast. I know that star sand is not the best to kill yeast, but we just really wanna rinse it more than anything. All right, I'm gonna do the next ones very quickly. I will not be talking during it. If you haven't seen me do this trick before, I just wanted to show you guys because I absolutely love it. Standard rubbing alcohol, Sharpie, beer. Maybe I should shut things before I try to clean them. Anyway. Ta-da! All right, so now these all get to be repurposed into my kitchen. Thanks so much for watching. Like and subscribe. I hope you guys find this helpful. As I said before, it's one of the most common requests of like videos I get. And it's really simple as I just showed you. Uh, you don't need much of anything. Like literally just you can do it in Tupperware. So thanks again. I'll see you guys later.